What is up, YouTube.com? It's your boy, John McGarrett's here with another episode of How to Grow Wealth. And just imagine right now that I'm saying a really good hook that makes you want to stay in the video. And we are on Proverbs 2 right now, so let's just shrink and then jump right into it. I don't want to mess around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe can you guys probably can't read that. I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, perfect. All righty. So Proverbs 2, new, new NIV. I know there's a bunch of different translations. People are probably getting mad about that, but it doesn't really matter. Um, they're all good enough. My hot take. Anyway. Uh, moral benefits of wisdom. Morality meaning um, right or wrong. So this is probably going to cause a lot of dis uh, contention with just the average viewer because there's half the world that thinks that morality is objective and there's half the world that thinks morality is subjective. But I don't think it matters in this uh, situation because like it's a benefit whether you believe in objective or subjective uh, reality whatsoever. Uh, because it is just a benefit to whether to morals in general. Uh, so regardless if it's subjective or objective, it doesn't really matter. Okay. I'm just freestyling, so whatever hops out in my head, I'm just going to chat about. Let's go. We're gonna we're just going to cover Proverbs 2 today. I'm just going to talk about it when we read along, okay? So my son, if you accept my words. One second. I uh I have kids, so I play music and then I um to blank them out while I'm recording. Yeah. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as it is for it as for hidden treasure. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So this is a lot said. Makes me feel better about myself uh, saying a lot of words to explain something simply here. It is simply saying, if you accept the words, like don't resist them, like weigh them out. This is like what uh, having what people uh, not necessarily the opposite of a discourse, just like listening, exploring thoughts. That's what this is saying. And if you store the commands up within you. Or you mean you have them and you, you commit some of whatever to memory. This is what storing up means. You commit it to memory on some level and then uh, in some regard have it. Have the ability to recall what you've read, uh, the commands or whatever. So you can think about them later. Turning your ear to wisdom, meaning uh, not. Not um, giving into distraction and impulse, but like focusing, removing all other distractions. And then focusing on wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, which means, again, your, your being, your will, your heart is also synonymous. I think that's the word synonymous. It is another way of saying your will. I mean, most people understand that. I'm just trying to cover all the bases so that anybody who does come here, I can just like try to catch. I'm trying to catch all of everybody I'm trying to talk, uh, talk to in my head here. Sorry, my camera. I'm trying a new Zoom today, but then my hands are gone. And the angle and everything is really weird now. Anyway, yes. High quality content, yeah. Anyway, indeed. If you call out for insight, meaning if you take an action, like if you call out for it, you um reach out, call out, make take the very easiest step towards and cry aloud for understanding. Um it's not okay, so it's not necessarily a step, it's beyond that. It's a uh it's a uh express a deep desire for, like pursuit a pursuit, a desire to pursue. Uh, if you look for it as for silver, which means, you know, in their time, I'm sure silver was really hard to come, uh, come upon. And if you found mineral deposits with silver in them, then you were probably a rich man. So then I'm sure a lot of people from that era were looking for silver like crazy because they knew it was a big payday. You know what I mean? It's like finding that viral video today in the uh, YouTube landscape and search for it as it is for hidden treasure. Uh, so like, I don't know if you guys ever seen those shows where they like try to whatever skull island or whatever i don't remember so the one the those those history channel shows where they they make you think that they're going to find something and they spend millions of dollars looking for something and it's, they never find it one of those shows so like if you if you apply that kind of um tenacity tenacity meaning like that type of fire for looking for it then you will understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god um so like this sounds kind of weird, maybe. Um, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. 
and what that means here is that like you'll understand why it's important. I believe that's what they're trying to talk about here. And find the knowledge of God. Finding the knowledge of God is just another way of saying for people who are like secular or secular, the secrets of the universe. That would be a, a secular way of looking at it. It's just like the only difference between theists and atheists or whatever is that one believes that the God created the world and has secrets, you know what I mean, waiting for us. But then atheists believe that there's just secrets of the universe. We just don't understand it. It's essentially the same thing. So there's not really – there shouldn't be too much contention here in my opinion. I don't know. If you have contention with this, it's I feel like you're getting hung up on the word God. But anyway, like try to extract – my advice to people who want to use this from a secular perspective to like uh, tr like uh, in a way that's going to derive like monetary value for you or just like whatever, like the wisdom from this and it of itself outside of the religious or spiritual aspect that you may find is silly. You're going to find a lot of value in this text because, again, this is from a king, somebody who knew stuff and it is relevant. Like times don't actually change. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I'm walking in a lot of landmines there, so I'm just going to forget that. But still, just don't get hung up on the word God. Just try to look at this for like what it's saying. Try to understand what they're trying to say and not just immediately dismiss it as a uh, religious gobbledygook because they, 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 there, there is a lot here that you can draw value from, and I know that's for a fact. For the Lord gives wisdom. Okay, so again, you're going to get hung up, but I would just ignore this and just take it for what it is. The Lord gives wisdom. Wisdom is given, okay? From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk, whose walk is blameless. For he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. All right. Let's just, I think this is a good spot to make commentary. Uh, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He, he holds success in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless, for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. So, uh, again, getting hung up on the God word here or the Lord here and stuff like that, I feel like it's going to be very difficult for a lot of people to like take anything, any value from this or even like um, to extrapolate any value from these words. But essentially, this is making the claim that if you're a good person, then life is going to, karma is going to protect you. Uh, success is those who act good are going to be more successful than those who act bad. And I know this is probably going to spark a lot of exceptions in your brain where, like, you know, greedy people stealing from the fortunate and stuff like that. And um, scamming people, scam artists make a lot of money. The people like Andrew Tate, uh, they exploit people and stuff like that. But then I would counter with... Um, just in case this, these are the types of thoughts you're having before we move on, is that uh, they, one, can only get away with those scams inside of a good society. Uh, the fact that I also think that adds weight to society being good, being the way to green wealth, is that the only reason why the value is there in the first place is that a good society built the wealth for it to be stolen from. Okay, So then number two is... I don't think they're actually making money. It's people who scam and greedy or are greedy or do the Andrew Tate method of exploiting... Um, the biology of uh, lonely men. If you don't know about what Andrew Tate did to make a lot of his money, just look it up. He brags about it all the time on the internet. He um, that's not really important to talk about though. But like, what they what they got um, isn't worth what it cost. They are now being pursued by the world, and they don't have really any shields to defend them, except for they have to try to make up. Um, now, because Andrew Tate, he caused a lot of problems. He it contributed to a very large problem in society. And then he's also now pretending to be the cure to it. But now he is also, he is not like somebody who's like Mr. Beast, who they try to fling crap at him, but they can't touch him because in essence, he is acting good. He's giving away all of his money as it comes into him. And as he gets more money, he gives more of it away. So then more money comes into him. Uh, but And the dramas and the criticisms of Mr. Beast and stuff like that. For most people, to most people, are just silly. So there we go. This is those are my arguments for why this is true, and whatever. But it's just making a claim here, and it is just saying matter of factly that if you go to the Lord, He'll give you wisdom. From His mouth comes knowledge, and understanding, and He holds success in those who are good people. So if like if you're a good person, understanding and wisdom will come to you very well. And then you will understand what is right and just and fair, every good path for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. So as you get wisdom, these things will start to happen to you. You'll notice them and it will be by result um, that this happens. 
it'll enter your heart and then you will have knowledge and it will be pleasant to your soul. So the knowledge you have will not cause despair. So then that is going to be a signal for when wisdom is starting to enter your enter you and you'll, you start to become more wise. All right. Discretion will protect you, which is true. Discretion meaning like weighing, um, weighing paths, um, weighing paths out. Just discretion in general. Maybe let's just look that word up. The quality of behaving or speaking in such a way to avoid causing offense or revealing private information. Yep, discretion. Okay, so perfect. That's that's context I didn't have. I, I wouldn't have been able to explain. So it's the quality of behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing offense. So you know what I mean? It's not, and this doesn't mean PC, but um, PC is bad. PC culture is bad because it's being forced. That's why I think a lot of people don't like PC. But if you force yourself to be PC, it's actually going to be super beneficial for you to just Reading a room, trying to avoid offense to who you're talking to is going to like win you favor with a lot of people. Um, and then also not revealing private information, which will make you more trustworthy or go more valuable. So then more value, will, you'll have more opportunities to get value. So discretion will protect you. So see what I'm saying? It will protect you and understanding will guard you. So understanding, that's what I mean by reading a room. You'll understand who you're talking to, stuff like that. Understand how to apply discretion. All right, yeah, and then also discretion has the second de uh, definition there, which is the freedom to decide what should be done in a particular situation. So I feel like this is also smart to talk about when we're talking about discretion. Let's hop right back in. It will protect you, and the understanding will guard you. Um, so these two things put together, wisdom, you know what I mean? So like why this is important to building wealth is that like first you need to protect wealth to be able to grow it. Does that make sense? Because if you can't protect your wealth, any money you make just goes away. So this, all this, like all this, is very important because it's going to build up to that. But this is the foundation of building wealth. So this is actually arguably the best, um, the best thing to start. Like to to grow wealth, these are very. I'm just saying, Proverbs is the way to to go. Well, as we progress together, you will it'll reveal yourself, itself to you more and more. Uh, wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse. Um, Wisdom, you know, wisdom is like what you ought to do with knowledge you have. Wicked men, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, it'll save you from being destroyed by them. So then like that is uh, being destroyed by wicked men or falling into the same traps that wicked men fall into, you know, like a drunkard or somebody who's like super into drugs or somebody who's into crime. Like you break into enough houses, eventually there's going to be a barrel waiting for you. You know what I mean? Uh, if you get into like gang warfare or gang type activities and stuff like that, you increase the likelihood that bad things are going to happen to you. Yeah, it, it can be fast cash because it's high risk. But if you're not calcul like you don't, I feel like even criminals would applying proverbs would be more um, successful because like a lot of why crime pays a lot is because of the um, high risk of it. So then there's lack of competition in the space compared to like normal business activities. You know what I mean? Like it's not necessarily illegal to sell bottles of water. Everybody has access to it, no barriers of entry, and there's nothing to really risk. And so then because you have multiple choices to go to get water, plus water is also almost free everywhere around us uh, with public utilities and businesses and stuff like that. There's no money to be really gained from selling water. And the actually the value that's derived from water that you buy at the store is con you're buying convenience. You're not actually buying uh, water. Uh, you're buying the plastic bottle. You're buying the labor, uh, whatever. You know what I mean? It's completely different. But crime, the reason why it pays a lot of money is because there's a lack of competition and people um, the market, the criminal market cycles people out in and out very fast too. So it's a trap. Like it seems like it's a lot of money, but you'll go into it. There's a high likelihood that you're going to be caught by law enforcement. You're going to be caught by uh, rival factions, stuff like that. It's a completely different game. So because it's a completely different game and it's a lot more high stakes, there's a lot more money in it. But yeah, um, that's why wisdom is going to protect you from wicked men. Because if you get a lot of money, but then you you go to prison, you're not getting a lot of money. You know what I mean? You may hold it for a few minutes, but it's gone. And that's not wealth. You know what I mean? Wealth, when people are talking about wealth, when we're talking about wealth and what you actually want as a person is going to be... 
value stored up over a long period of time to per, like give you the ability to do what you want when you want. That's like what I think people mean when they mean wealth and Proverbs is going to give it to you. So then let's continue a little bit. Um, I digress anyway. Men whose words are perver perverse, you know what I mean? Uh, it's also another signal for people who are wicked would be they are loose lipped. It's not necessarily cursing, but it's like. The attitudes they have towards other people, the yeah, that's why it doesn't say cursing here. It does not say swear words. Swear words. This perverse doesn't mean necessarily swear words, but it's perverse language. Anyway, who have left the straight paths to to walk in dark ways? Yep, wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men. For men whose words are perverse, who have left the straight paths to walk in dark ways, who delight in doing wrong. Um. And rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked, and who are devious in their ways. So this is this is painting a picture of a specific type of person. This is not somebody who's like, for instance, a drug addict. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily what it's saying, but it's saying like there's a particular like you know people who are narcissistic or psychopaths or typical like there, it's a different level of um, bad. You know what I mean? Like, there's people who do bad things, but then there's people who are like this. They're evil beyond that or whatever. And I, I'm i not weighing judgments to one type of person over another type of person. What I'm saying is is wisdom will protect you from the, the, the bump in the night. The, the really evil, like the, the highest levels of evil. Um, wisdom will also save you from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with her seductive words, who has left a partner of her youth and ignored the covenant she made before God. This is saying like um, this may trigger a lot, but I mean everybody. I think know you know who I'm talking about when I say this shit, any or what this shit is said. Surely her house leads down to death, and her paths to the spirits of the dead. Know who go to her return or attain paths of life. Um, so let's say, for instance, now the modern version of this would be like simping for e girls, and uh, tell me one person who simps for e girls who is living a life you want. Um, so that's what I would say there. Thus, you will walk in the ways of good and keep paths of the righteous for the upright will live in the land and the blameless will remain in it. So that means through times when government, when governments change hands, the righteous will still remain the institutions that remain blameless and righteous. Uh, they will, they, they are trustworthy. So they won't be completely weeded out. You know what I mean? Like America, we live in like a, um, such it seems like a blessed time where we seem to just be able to do whatever we want and stuff like that but at any day that could change america you know we're only a 200 year old country there's other governments you know what i mean like the bible is full of history of many uh incidents where even the jews were conquered by the the new america um you know rome babylon etc the assyrians whatever I, I don't i don't know about assyrians actually i don't i don't want to misquote but there's a lot of people that conquered israel and but when they were conquered, uh, the ones who still held power were the ones of like the highest righteousness product, like and righteous, being righteous and whatever, blameless and stuff like this allows you to build up little amounts of wealth and then you're valuable. So then they don't want to kick you out when they take over your country because they're going to need new man. Like the managers are going to stay the same. You know what I mean, like the, the business as usual, they're just going to be changing hands in the government. Yeah. But yeah. But. The wicked will be cut off from the land and the unfaithful will be torn from it. Like, like, just imagine this. Like, how I try to imagine something like this is, like, China comes in and wipes the U.S. off the map. They're going to, like, pick through all the people and be like, well, we can't have everybody. Who are we going to get rid of? And they're going to get rid of, like, people they view as completely degenerate criminals or whatever who go against, who are unproductive. And, like, wicked people are usually kind of unproductive, more or less. You know what I mean? Like, they, you know, there's a lot of stereotypes surrounding a lot of, like, wicked people that... I could go in and, and on and on about, but I'm sure you guys can draw pictures of that in your head, whatever. But I mean, this kind of goes without saying, I don't know. I feel like maybe I, I shouldn't have maybe hung up on this so long, but that is the end of Proverbs number two. So the big takeaways from this, um, from this chapter is that, you know, you accept the words, you know, if you just like are willing to, this is what being open-minded would be accepting words and store the commands up, applying your heart to understanding, call it insight. Da, da, da. You will get knowledge. That means if you like, if you want knowledge, knowledge, if you want wisdom and knowledge and understanding and insight, all these things come with, um, 
a want for it. But as soon as you want it, it immediately comes, it starts rushing into you. That's what this is claiming. Um, and God will give to all generously. Okay. You can say God or whatever, you know, the universe, you know, just manifest it, manifest it if you want to. But anyway, it's like, it comes to you. And the first, like part of the first part, like, I think it's important that we talk about that. It's talking about righteousness being wise and then evil not being not wise to again further solidify the foundations of like how to grow wealth and like if you if you start out by making money and you don't like um first establish which one's better being uh righteous or being wicked then when you go into making money you're not going to really um you're going to fall prey to a lot of scams honestly too there's a lot of like what the money makers that I see online, like dropship, like dropshipping is a real business. I think it is, but they, they sell it like it's free money. Uh, you're going to fall into a lot of these like traps or whatever, but like you'll be willing to do things that will destroy you. That's why you make money. What I was talking about crime and stuff like that. Like uh, it comes at a great cost to make money that quickly. Um, and this is the beginning of wisdom is deciding that you want it and then um determining after consideration if you take this at its word um that righteousness will grow you well it will it will i will i mean i'm just kind of like wandering way off the path here but righteousness is how you grow wealth wickedness will not grow you wealth over a long period of time and that's pretty much what proverbs 2 is breaking down and it'll save you wisdom will save you it'll keep you alive it'll add years to your life It'll protect you from certain types of evil. Um, it will protect you from, you could say adulterous women isn't necessarily evil, but it is, at the very least, um, unproductive. Productive. <laughs> but um, it is unproductive when it comes to monetary value. Uh, I don't know very many people who made a lot of money chasing, uh, chasing bar flies if so to speak here so there's that but yeah so that's that's proverbs 2 i'm gonna day to day i'm just gonna try my best to try to like uh interpret or break down or show how value is going to be derived from each chapter word by word as much as possible and if you came this far into this video uh i i think you should subscribe because you listen to me struggle to talk <laughs> But yeah, you you and I obviously have something going on. So you should probably sub, uh, subscribe. And also to uh, Proverbs, you know, even if I do a bad job of explaining it, simply reading it out loud and it just like um, getting into you is going to increase the likelihood that you make more money. That's, that's, uh, that's I will stand on that till the end of my life. Um, but yeah, so I'll just. Um... That being said, I'll uh, see you guys later in the next video. And um, hopefully I can get better at this very quickly so that you guys don't have to suffer through my growing stage my growing pains but yeah see you later